I've been using Sony cameras since the last couple of years. I've used the Sony a7 Mark III, the RX0 Mark II, and since a couple of months I'm using the Sony a6600. Today in this review I'll tell you all the pros and cons about this camera and show you the perfect blogging setup for YouTube. Sony A6600 is Sony's latest and greatest offering in its popular A6000 series APS-C mirrorless cameras. Its 24.2 megapixel sensor is the same as in the previous generations like the A6500, but Sony has implemented the image processor from the Sony A9 and comes with an advanced eye autofocus and subject tracking capabilities. Other new high-end features include a weather-sealed magnesium alloy body that integrates in-body sensor shift image stabilization and a high-capacity battery. I won't talk too long about shooting pictures, as I use it mostly for videos and we all know Sony is doing quite good in pictures. But it's worth to mention that the UHS-1 memory allows up to 11 FPS of continuous shooting, but for not too long and the saving times are also quite high. I personally don't need two SD card slots, but the faster slot would have been awesome. It comes with a new battery, it's the same like in the A7 Mark III, that results in great battery life and to be exact, it's roughly double the battery life than the previous generation. It also features a 5-axis sensor stabilization that helps in low light and provides incredibly smooth videos. So guys, here's now a clip in auto mode in 4K30 and well, um, when you still have a little bit of light like the lantern right over here, um, it shoots still with um, um, a shutter speed that is okay, but as soon as you get out of the light, well, it reduces the shutter speed a lot. So then it gets a little bit laggy as you can see. So in order to bypass that, you have to go to manual video mode, um, fix the shutter speed and then actually crank up the ISO. And I'll quickly show you how that looks like in in 4k so let's check it out so guys we're shooting this clip now in 4k 30 with iso 8000 and well it's a really high iso as you can see but basically the noise in the video you can actually deal a little bit with it in post processing and i think for low light um the a the a6600 is actually doing very well so let me know what you think down below in the comments I sometimes use a gimbal for some videos, but mostly I shoot all my videos with the A6600 handheld and it's doing really great. The connectors are also a bit different. It features a headphone out, microphone in, micro HDMI and micro USB. And well, yes, micro USB seems to be still a thing in 2020, unfortunately. Also micro HDMI is something I don't like too much as it doesn't provide a safe cable connection to the monitor. Now, if you're curious on how I film my tabletop videos, well, I usually connect an external monitor to the A6600 and I put it on a tripod. As you can see, the display is then off, but you can see everything here as output on the monitor. And yeah, the picture is looking really fine. So the lens is really nice and wide angle. And if you do videos like this, you really need an external monitor because you're sitting here and you cannot flip the display here to the side and turn it upside down or something. You can only do this. And if you sit here, you don't see it. External monitors are really great for the A6600 and they need a mini HDMI connector. I usually also then connect the A6600 to power. You can do this from um, the USB power supply. That's perfectly fine. So you don't lose any battery. Here you can connect an external microphone, but what I usually do, I connect this here to the top. So um the sony microphone which sounds really good i mean you can do videos like this but for the best sound quality i use an external microphone and then synchronize both audio clips which is really working good but also this is really a perfect video camera setup because it's so um, compact it has a really nice sensor really nice image quality and i absolutely love it for tabletop videos so in case you're doing videos like this really think about getting the a6600 the focus is on point the focus is so fast so when i move my hand like here and here again it is really really fast focus and this is something i like about it you don't need to set any manual focus you can set um for instance a touch um focus here on the smartphone and then we'll keep always this area um yeah in focus and it's working really really good and even though there's a flip display 
I need a monitor from time to time for tabletop videos and the internal monitor is kinda small. So if you shoot in manual focus mode, a monitor really helps to check if the shot is sharp. The display is a 180 degree flip up display, but you can't flip it down, which really isn't great when you're using accessories like a shotgun microphone. Also the display is not the brightest, nor it has the highest resolution on the market, but it's still quite okay to see what's going on. There's also a viewfinder that hasn't really changed, and even though it's really great, also its resolution falls a bit short to the competition. I was mainly using the 6600 with the 12-24mm f2.4 G lens, which is a great lens, but due to the APS-C sensor and the crop, you get 18-36mm out of it, which is still quite wide, but does make a difference compared to the a7 Mark III. It suffers less to non-vignetting and is already sharp at 12mm f.4 corner to corner. The 18-36mm equivalent zoom range appeals to me too. Now wide angle lenses are also perfect for vlogging as you don't need to hold the camera so far away from yourself and you're always in the frame. But well you got a bit of distortion and less bokeh, but for vlogs I would say it comes down to your personal style. When it comes to video well it really comes down to what you want. I would say the A6600 is a camera that can be used for everything from basic vlogs to short movies and even high production client videos. The benefits are that it is extremely easy to use and the focus is always on point. I just miss 4K60 on this camera as it tops out at 4K30, but there is something people barely talk about and this is high frame rate of up to 120fps in full HD. Now 120fps is really cool to get those nice looking stabilized looking slow motion shots. Basically you can play back the video with 0.25x speed and still get 30fps. Also compared to other cameras, the focus works still extremely good in the 120fps mode. This is something my GH5S can't do, as in 120 or 240fps only manual focus can be used. And for me this is a huge benefit. But I still miss 4K60 on this camera as this can be really useful when you want to shoot the whole project in 4K for additional cropping. The auto mode is capable of very natural and good looking colors and exposure which is great for vlogs as you don't need to do any color grading or play around with the setting and it looks fine straight out of the box. For color grading I mostly shoot in S-Log3 which goes now to a minimum ISO of 500 for less noise. Now S-Log gives you more dynamic range and control over the colors in post, but you should only shoot in S-Log when you really need it, as for B-Log this is too much effort in post production, at least for me. On the A7 Mark III I had some issues with overheating when I filmed some longer tabletop videos, but on the A6600 this is completely gone. You can shoot without any limits and this camera never overheats, so Sony now did a really good job on it. The body is also weatherproof and I used it in Sweden at minus 10 degrees in the snow and the camera is really sturdy and survives all kind of weather conditions. So it's perfect for traveling and doing vlogs and also the double battery life here helps a lot, especially in the cold. The in-body microphone is okay, but for vlogs the two most important things beside your storyline are sound and focus. Now focus is awesome and for the sound I would really recommend the Sony shotgun mic. It's one of the best sounding shotgun mics I've tested and features many options from filters to audio level adjustments and also characteristics adjustments. That means you can use it when you're in front of the camera, but also simply switch the characteristics to use it when you're behind the camera. This is what many shotgun mics can't do and this is a huge benefit for vlogging. Rolling shutter is something a lot of reviewers mention when they talk about the A6600 and yes it's very visible. But to be honest for vlogging it doesn't really make a difference and most people don't even know what that is. But if it's a concern for you, well then you should look at a different camera. So summarizing the A6600 is a compact camera targeted at video producers and vloggers. It boasts 4K HDR capture with no restriction on recording length along with an integrated microphone socket for enhanced audio clarity plus a built-in headphone input for sound monitoring and from my point of view it's one of the best options if you want to do some serious vlogging on YouTube. Alrighty guys, so we're now here at the end of this review and now a little bit of real talk and my personal feedback about the A6600. 
So well, this is not only a great camera for vlogging, it's also nice to shoot projects. I shoot Facebook videos for some companies on this camera because well, it's just really, really compact as you can see. Now the grip is really nice to get a steady and yeah, um, good grip here on the camera to get some nice footage. Now I really like to shoot in high frame rate and then slow it down in post to get some really steady shots without the gimbal. And also my Panasonic GH5S can do it, but when you go over 60 frames per second, then you have to switch on variable frame rate. And in this mode, the autofocus is not working anymore. Now on Sony cameras, you can shoot, uh, you can shoot 120 FPS with the autofocus on. And this is so helpful because the autofocus on this camera is just mind blowing. Now the eye autofocus, especially, especially for vlogging, if you log like this, it's always on point. There is really barely a situation where the focus is out of focus. And this is something what makes this camera really, really convenient. Now for sure you have a few downsides as I've mentioned in this video and the biggest downside is that the monitor only folds up to the top. It would be really great if it could fold to the bottom so that you could turn it down because um, when you're using a shotgun microphone like um, the Sony shotgun microphone here and you want to you know um, flip up the monitor then you can actually not see anything on the display which is a little bit annoying. Now if you could flip the display to the bottom well this problem would be solved or if you could flip the display to the right but I think there are some kind of patent issues um, on Sony but I'm not 100% sure about that. Anyhow the 6600 is a fantastic camera it's not really cheap to be honest especially when you're starting on YouTube but when you're a little bit more advanced so when you want to take the YouTube game serious really guys the A6600 improves your workflow a lot it makes things so much easier so the focus is always on point you can shoot high frame rate with autofocus you can shoot an s-log you have all the picture profiles for amazing color grading so you can also shoot like client projects with that and it's a camera for almost every situation and by the way it also takes pretty good pictures so most of my thumbnail pictures I shoot them with the a6600 because well you can flip up the display you tap the display then um, three seconds and it takes a picture and it's really really nice and convenient so well guys, if you like this video, then I would really appreciate if you could like this video. If you have any questions about YouTube gear in general, about the A6600, then leave them down below in the comments. And yeah, as always guys, I'm Steven from Tech Magnet and I'll catch you in the next one. Have a nice day and bye.